Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here uh, today. It was back in the early 1980s when the United States Supreme Court in Plyler versus Doe found that children have a right to attend public schools without regard to their immigration status. And the court found that the, any resources saved from excluding undocumented children was far outweighed by the harms that they would suffer from denying them an education. And also importantly, regardless of your position, anyone's position on the parents of these children, whether you think they came here to find a better life or whether you think that they're violators of the law, regardless of where you stand on that issue, the court also found that holding young children accountable for the actions of their parents does not comport with the fundamental conceptions of justice. We absolutely need to understand that these are children we're talking about, children and babies that we're talking about. Dr. Falusi, you talked about WIC. Um, I was just in a WIC clinic in Northwest Oregon last week, and I heard about the fear and the confusion that this administration has created because of its policies with a um, chilling effect on families who are now afraid to seek out critical services that will help to keep pregnant women, babies, and children healthy. And that's really tragic because as we heard and read in your testimony, um, this is a really good investment to make sure that kids get a good start in life. And we know that that's not just happening in Oregon. Children across the country are going without food, without health care, putting them at risk. And I want to note that this includes many children who are U.S. citizens, whose parents may not understand that they do not need to reveal their own immigration status for their children to receive support for their children to receive support. Um, the superintendent of Hillsborough, Oregon Schools pointed out that even though they have a significant Latino population, they're not all from migrant families. They're all afraid of what's going to happen to their friends and their families. So the, these fears are, we're seeing them in our schools and our clinics. Um, Dr. Faluzi, how do you counsel families who are trying to get the best support for their children, for their health and development, but are also so fearful about the consequences. And then also, uh, Dr. Faluzi, will you also talk about WIC? Because a recent study from the University of California, the PHFE WIC and the County of Los Angeles found that for every dollar invested in WIC, it saves approximately $2.48 in medical education and productivity costs. So talk about the economic risks of not of not making sure these families are getting the, those services. All right, thank you. Um, in terms of how we counsel families, we do try to encourage them um, to be aware of what benefits they may be eligible for. Um, I think in the current environment, it is difficult for families to decide how to make that choice. Um, I'm fortunate that I work in a health center that is co-located with a WIC clinic, so I can partner with them in educating families about their benefits and um, from the pregnant mom whose child I may be seeing now all the way through the child who is about to enter kindergarten. Um, so that, that is a benefit. I think thinking about co-locating, working more closely within the health sector and, and our WIC clinics is critical. Um, and then in terms of the economic outcome, so absolutely, we know that early investment in child health and nutrition um, reaps benefits for that child, the family, and society in general. Um, and not doing so increases the risk of things like food insecurity, which we know is correlated with um, poor, um, decreased uh, math and reading scores. Um, imagine taking an algebra test while your stomach is growling, trying to focus in school um, when you didn't have breakfast that morning or if your family is encountering food insecurity. Thank you, and I'm gonna try to get another question for Dr. Yes, Barajas yes, Gonzalez. Um, uh, Doctor, in Northwest Oregon, I've heard stories about the trauma young people from immigrant families are experiencing, and I mentioned um, uh, the super superintendent, Scott, from Hillsborough, Oregon, mentioned that a lot of their families are, are concerned that the kids are afraid. What are the long-term effects of the trauma that these young people are experiencing? What supports will they need? You know, the superintendent mentioned that some of them feel like, why even try? If, you know, how, how can they dream if, if they feel so afraid? And to what extent are school districts and healthcare providers and community-based organizations able to provide the support these, these students need? Thank you for the question. Um, the mental health educators uh, mental health counselors and educators I've spoken with have all um, indicated a concern and their own uh, reach, trying to educate themselves a bit more about what they can do. They're all pointing to a need for more trauma-informed care for children. Uh, the long-term impact for some, but not all children, will be uh, potentially under education, under employment, uh, potentially psychological distress. 
Um, as you said, many people uh, who find themselves unable to dream about a better future because they are living in uncertainty. Thank you, and I see my time has expired. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.